Good morning, Light Lions. I hope all of you had a wonderful week. I hope all of you are doing well and are being safe. Um, you know, it's been almost a year now since we've seen each other, but hopefully God will let us come together and, you know, play with each other and, you know, enjoy church one more time. So let's get today started. Um, let's go ahead, close our eyes, bow our heads, put our hands together, and I'll pray. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for just giving us the opportunity to learn more about you. Lord, I ask that you be with the children and their families, that they be safe, and that uh, whatever it is that you're doing uh, in our lives, Lord, that we remember you are in control and that all things are done because you will it, Lord. So I ask that we be receptive to that and that we just enjoy everything that you've given us so far, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right, so I'm going to continue on this part about, you know, people that got to meet Jesus, right? So we're going to talk about the man with many problems. Now, some of you probably remember this one. But in the book of Mark, chapter 5, it says, They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes, and when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. So there was a guy who basically was acting all crazy. You know, um, people avoided him because he was just so weird. You know, he looked kind of like this guy. And it says that he lived among the tombs and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart and he broke the shackles in pieces. No one had the strength to subdue him. So this guy was not only acting crazy and doing crazy stuff, but nobody could stop him because he was so strong. It was to the point that he was breaking chains apart. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him. And crying out with a loud voice, he said, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he was saying to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. So Jesus was literally just walking. And this guy just saw how radiant Jesus was, right? That he could see all the cleanliness or like how clean Jesus was and how much holy power he had right and you know the guy literally was just screaming just from being in the presence of Jesus and Jesus was yelling at him come out of the man you unclean spirit Jesus knew exactly what was wrong with this man why he was yelling and screaming uh, why he was so strong and why he was always crying in the tombs and Jesus asked him what is your name he replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. So if you look at the bottom, the, um, de like the dictionary definition of Legion is 3,000 to 6,000 soldiers. So the spirit that was in this man said, We are Legion, meaning there's 3,000 to 6,000 spirits just living in that one man alone. That's crazy, right? So now a great herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him, saying, Send us to the pigs, let us enter them. So he gave them permission, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the pigs. The herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the sea. The herdsmen fled and told it to the city and the country, and people came to see what it was that had happened. So, you know, very close by, there happened to be a very big herd of pigs, right? And there was 2,000 of them. And the spirits, because there were so many, were able to possess all those pigs, and they ended up running and killing themselves in the sea, right? That's how terrified these spirits were of Jesus and his power, because they knew exactly what Jesus was capable of. And, you know... The people who were watching the pigs, obviously they saw this and they were like, this is crazy. We have to tell everybody. So here's the picture, right? If you guys remember. 
And they came to Jesus and saw the demon-possessed man, the one who had the lesion, uh, sitting there, clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. You know, and those who had seen it described to them what had happened to the demon-possessed man and to the pigs. So obviously, you know, people heard everything, but they weren't there to see it. So when they saw the guy just sitting there wearing normal clothes, acting very calm, uh, he wasn't doing any of the like crazy stuff he was doing before, they were still scared of him because they were like, what if he's faking it so that he can like hit me or something, right? And, you know, a lot of people would be worried. But the people who saw the spirits being driven out and saw what the spirits did to the pig, they knew, like, the man was saved. And they began to beg Jesus to depart from the region. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed with demons begged him that he might be with him. So, you know, the people were afraid of Jesus because they were like, whoa, who's this guy that could make evil spirits, you know, go into pigs and then kill all the pigs, right? And... That's not the way we should, you know, people should re be reacting, especially because he saved and cured this man from, you know, evil spirits. But, you know, they were afraid of him, so they told him to just leave, get away. But the man who knew who Jesus was after being possessed for so long, he knew who Jesus was and he wanted Jesus to stay. And he did not permit him, but said to him, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him and everyone marveled. So a couple things with this story, right? One is that, you know, people may not recognize Jesus or God immediately, but spirits you know, like spirits, demons, angels, yeah, the devil himself, they, they all recognize Jesus very easily in these stories. And that's one thing that we should know, is that the glory of God, the presence of God, things like that, they're not something that we should be missing, especially when spirits and demons know exactly who or what, you know, Jesus and God are. The other thing about this is that the people were told that Jesus saved, you know, that one man who was, you know, super scary and everybody was terrified of him. But they drove away the guy who saved that man. And that's something that we also have to be careful of because, you know, Jesus does a lot for us, but in the end, we might drive him away simply because one, we're afraid, or two, we just don't understand really what is going on. So with this story, we have to understand that um, the people that meet Jesus, they're, um, it's not just these few people that he's met, but they stand out because um, they kind of show exactly what we as human beings kind of go through. We, we don't really understand like the glory of God and we kind of just fear God and because of that fear we kind of push him away when we should be bringing God closer to us right so here we have to take a lesson from that that even though Jesus has like all these powers and can do all these things we don't need to be afraid of him because he loves us and he wants to save us, just like he saved that one man who had thousands of demons in him. Okay. All right. So um, that's all for today. Uh, great job listening. And I hope you guys are, you know, paying attention in school, doing your homework as best you can and getting out there to exercise. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out in prayer and I'll let you guys have the rest of your day. Okay. So let's close our eyes, bow our heads, put our hands together. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for just giving us the opportunity to learn about, you know, just how spirits can recognize who you are and how we as human beings, we can just be so fearful of who you are. So Lord, I ask that we not be fearful, um, but that we be delighted in your presence, that we remember you are here to save us and we are simply the lost sheep. So Lord, I ask that we 
remember and truly hold in our hearts that you are the one who truly cherishes us and wants to just guide us towards heaven. Um, Lord, forgive us of our sins, forgive us of our doubts, and just give us the strength and the courage to believe, Lord, especially in these times right now. And Lord, we pray that you be with the church, um, you be with the members, you be with the families, and that you be with the teachers. But most importantly, Lord, I ask that you be with the pastor and just let him speak to the congregation and guide the congregation the way you want us to be guided, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right, everybody. Great job today, and I will see you next week. Bye.